welcome to this channel in today's video i'm going to show you how we can scrape information from an e-commerce website so this is a beginner friendly tutorial and for that reason we're going to use a demo website this is uh, the books to scrape site and uh, it's very simple it does not have the complexities of a real uh, e-commerce site and for that reason this is a good way to begin writing your first scraping script so let's get started so the first thing is uh, we're going to import the pandas the beautiful soup and the requests libraries and uh, we are going to store all the book informations that you're going to scrape in a list that you're going to call the all books the first step that you're going to do is download our page and create a soup object the real of our first page So for now, we're going to scrape on the formation in the first page and then we're going to deal with the pagination later on. So we're going to download the page using the requests dot get. And uh, once we have our page, now we can create the soup object. With the beautiful soup. So that would be the page dot get uh, dot texts, and we also pass our parser. If you don't have installed, make sure that you first pip install. So that is the first step. So the next step that we're going to need is inspect our website and see how we can be able to retrieve the information that we need. So the information that we have on our landing page or the home page for each of the listing is very limited. We have the title, a price, and a listing, and info that the, uh, the item is available in stock. So for more detailed information is available in each of the individual book listing. So as you can see, we have the title here, the price, the actual available stock, the rating, we can also have the category of the book and so on and so forth. Here we have the unique product code and any other information that we may need to retrieve. So therefore, we need to get the, li the links for each of the book appearing on our page. So the second step is uh, get all book links. And we're going to store the links in a list called links. So let's select the elements which you call the listings and then soup.find. You find it all elements. Each book listing is contained in an element article product pod so we need to retrieve all the product pod in the given page so now then from each of the listed books we can retrieve the book link so using the for loop for listing in listings so have our book link so we can see that our book link is in the h3 tag so let's go ahead and retrieve that so this will be listing we're going to find a h3 dot a then you dot get 
the high ref. So as we can see from here, the high ref is not the complete link for the book listing. To get the complete, we defined a base URL. The complete list we concatenate or the base URL and the book link. So let's go ahead and print the complete links. So we do have an error. This should be product pod. So there we have it. We have all the links for all the books listed on our given page. So now then we're going to append these complete links in our links list that we created. So now we have all the listings and their links for the given page. The next step is we need to go and extract the information in each of the links that we have obtained. For link in links, so once more, we're going to download the book link using the requests. And then we also create a book soup, each of the individual book link. So now we have a beautiful soup object for the each of the book listing. So one of the few items that you can get is the title of the book. So the title of the book, it's contained in this class. So let's go ahead and copy the book soup going to find a class is the class that we've copied and we're looking for the h1 tag dot texts and we can also strip any white spaces we can also get the price of each book and the price is in a p tag which is containing the same element as the title but in this case the price is contained in a p tag we can also get the stock which is found in the class in stock availability. Let's copy that class. So booksoup.find the class name there and we are going to extract the texts dot strip. So let's print title, price and stock. We have our books title, the price and the in stock levels data dictionary that we store the information of each individual book, books and finally now we are going to to append the book information into the list that contain all books which you also named as all books dot append book let us print the length of all books lists for our first page so as you can see our list of all books will have 20 books and that is the case as in our web page we have 20 listed books so now then now that our code is working properly we can now group all the three steps into functions and the first one let's call the function gets the page and creates the beautiful soup object so let's call it uh, the get page and it takes a url indent the uh, the body of the code and we're going to return soup the second function that gets all the links so we're going to indent the body and in this case we're going to return the links lists so then finally we have the last part which deals with the extraction of the information so let's call it extract info and it takes a list of links and also indent the body so let's see how with our code we'll work using the newly defined functions so the url is as follows and the first step 
is to get the page. So all the links variable we get from the function get links and the function get links takes the return value of the get page function. The extract info function will take value or links. So let's run the code and we should expect the length of all books to be 20 as we saw earlier on. So perfectly, we can see we have 20 books in our all books lists. So now then, let's think about the pagination. So first of all, in the get page function, let's return the status codes. We're going to return a list soup and also the status. So looking at our pages, the last page of our website is 50. And if we attempt to load page 51, the status code is 4. Four. So we're going to, to use this behavior to determine once we get to the end of our paginations. So let's define a variable page and the URL now will be a formatted string so that you can input different page numbers. So we're going to use the while loop. And then, first of all, we're going to call the get pitch function. And this function now returns a list with the soup and the status code. So let's call the variable it returns as a soup status. And now we're going to use the if function to test whether the status code is 200. And the status code is at index 1 in our get page return value. So if the status code is 200, meaning that the page has been loaded successfully, we print scraping page, the given page. And then we go ahead and call the get links function and the extract information functions and the get links function takes a soup object which is stored in the soup status index zero 